the National Congress of the Communist Party of China has concluded successfully in Beijing. The outcomes of this important Congress have aroused great attention and discussion in Africa. The House Chairperson of the National Assembly in South Africa, Cedric Thomas Froelich, said the Chinese socialism with unique Chinese characteristics has contributed to the Chinese wisdom, wisdom and China's plan as an alternative solution to the rest of the world. Here's more of what he had to say. What is refreshing about the role of China in the international community is, is that it realized that you need to integrate with the rest of the world. You cannot isolate yourself from the rest of humanity. And the presence of China under the leadership of President Xi Jinping and the foreign objectives that they are pursuing is a breath of fresh air in the international arena. Look at the outstanding work that China is doing in terms of its commitment to the Conference of Parties in terms of climate change. They have exceeded the targets that they have subscribed to. While other countries are withdrawing and uh, ignoring the deal that was made in the Climate Paris Agreement, you see China has taken up the responsibility. Well, let's get you more uh, on an African perspective on China's new leadership. And I'm joined by Dr. Kagir, Robert Kagiri, who is the director in charge of strategy and policy management at the African Policy Institute. Dr. Kagiri, thank you for joining us here on Africa Live. Now, China has unveiled its new uh, CPC leadership. What is your take on China's new leadership lineup? Well, the lineup that is there now is um, uh, a lineup of continuity. Uh, we are seeing that. Um, uh, uh, President Xi Jinping has um, uh, basically kept the old lineup that is there. The Premier is still in the seven uh, member uh, bureau, political bureau. So we are going to see from the new leadership a continuity of the initiatives that have been uh, provided by the leadership of uh, President Xi Jinping, uh, particularly initiatives such as the Belt and Road Initiative that he launched in 2012, in initiatives such as the BRICS Plus Initiative which um, we ha has already invited uh, two African countries, that is Egypt and Kenya, to be part of it. And uh, we're going to see a more uh, bigger drive for, glo for globalization, to fill the vacuum that has been uh, left by the inward-looking uh, policies of the United States. Let's look at that a bigger drive, though, because China has now outlined its guiding principles going into the future. In terms of Africa, because China and Africa's partnership has grown by leaps and bounds mm -hmm. over the last 10 years, what is Africa's expectation here? Well, as laid down, um, the two key things that came out of this was um, the opening of China, the ch uh, China even more to the rest of the world. And then they spoke about uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics being the new model, new world model. Uh, for us in Africa who are uh, subjects of former colonial powers and um, have been used to the Western uh, democratic way of um, running government, the new centralized uh, democracy and socialism from China uh, might start gaining currency, especially because of the success that they have had in lifting uh, over 600 million out of, uh, of their citizens out of poverty, which is um, a problem that we are facing uh, continuously in Africa with uh, no great success. So this model will probably be uh, one that we'll be choosing to adopt uh, here in Africa uh, because of the success it has had in China. So a lot of um, the things that China is doing now in terms of uh, liberalizing their market, welcoming um, uh, their partners, foreign partners to come in through the Belt and Road Initiative, helping them to have uh, w uh, the win-win cooperation, whereby uh, they're not just looking to impose and take out from, from Africa, but they're right. looking to be partners with us. Uh, and of course, because China is now Africa's leading trade partner yes. and the leading investor in many African countries mm. uh, today, how should Africa be positioning itself to take advantage uh, or, or to benefit more from engaging with the Chinese partnership? Well, the China is looking toward um, accelerating its growth uh, over the next five years. They are about to celebrate their 100th anniversary um, uh, since the founding of the CPC in uh, 1921. And uh, this acceleration, what Africa needs to do is to latch onto it. Through the Belt and Road Initiative I spoke about, we, already, we have already seen Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Egypt, and Djibouti sort of uh, enter into this fold. Um, Kenya and Ethiopia 
two, well, were the two African presidents that were represented in the BRI summit that was held earlier this year. So the more we align uh, our, the initiatives that we have, the FOCAC initiative, the BRI initiative, and fall into that as China accelerates its uh, race to become the world leader, we shall see a lot of benefits accruing to us. So there is a lot of opportunity that is out there for us by coming closer to the uh, agenda that has been set up by the Communist Party of China Congress this time around. Uh, there's a lot of continuity and what we need to do is build up on that relationship for, uh, uh, in order to benefit for, for, to, from what um, President Xi calls uh, developmental peace. Uh, they have been a crucial player in uh, not only economic development but peace and security, especially in the Horn of Africa. Now that they have opened a, 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 a military base in Djibouti, to help um, uh, police the Somali coastline and other areas there, reduce piracy. So we're gonna, there are many areas of cooperation that we can use to accelerate our own growth and looking at the Chinese model, which has been successful, on, especially over the last two decades. Right. We can learn a lot without having to go through the same growing pains uh, of learning and uh, reduce our learning curve by working closely with them. Uh, Dr. Kagwiri, thank you very much yes. uh, for your insights on Africa's perspectives.